So just to give a background, like uh, what we're trying with Service Bus 360 is to build like a really good operations monitoring and analytics platform for uh, Azure Service Bus. So we have done a similar thing for BizTalk with uh, BizTalk 360. Uh, since we have like you know 15, 20 years experience in messaging and integration area, we can spot some of the, the challenges uh, uh, what a typical organization and enterprises will face on a production kind of uh, scenario. And we, we can also understand like uh, some of the things may not fit right into the into the Microsoft uh, development uh, uh, roadmap uh, the, because some of them will fall under the, the solution category rather than the platform category and Microsoft may not be able to provide those kind of uh, uh, solutions. So those are the gaps we are trying to address with uh, with uh, Service Bus uh, 360. So we got a couple of slides which shows the key features what we have uh, right now. So all those uh, tick boxes means like we have completed this, and these are available right now for anybody to give a give it a try. Like a, it's a SaaS based product, so you can just go to uh, servicebus360.com and sign up for an account, and you can associate some of your namespaces and start playing with it uh, straight away. Like even we have a free account so for people to kick start uh, uh, immediately. So whoever in this call, like if you want to give it a try, just go to servicebus360.com and sign up for an account and start playing with it. So you can see the key features on the messaging side, the cues and topics. We wanted to give the ability for all those uh, standard things like uh, creating, uh, updating, deleting, all those kind of things. So we understand there will be a slight overlap when you compare it with the Azure portal. And also one of the key things what we have done is uh, uh, we know like a Service Bus Explorer from Paolo is uh, widely used across the entire uh, Azure Service Bus uh, community. And uh, we, you know, we are happy to say like, we completely replaced uh, Service Bus Explorer now. So if you're using today Service Bus Explorer, you can pretty much do everything what you, you can using Service Bus Explorer and Service Bus 360 now. Apart from few anal analytics stuff, which we believe like nobody is actually using it on the Service Bus Explorer. So that's another great news. And we also have capabilities like you can import the configuration from Service Bus Explorer, so you really don't lose any of your work. And, uh, and we have spent a lot of time on uh, things like uh, dead letter processing, uh, bringing some exclusive monitoring capabilities for relays, which are very important. And the standard uh, monitoring that comes out of the uh, Azure portal or even third parties are at very, very high level, but we go a bit deeper and uh, more focused on, on, on messaging scenarios. I'm not going to read out the slide, so we probably wanted to show more in the products, so Arun will cover that. And ap apart from that, we also have like a lot of general capabilities, like a governance audit is one thing. So if you imagine like you have a production uh, queues and topics, whatever, and you don't want to uh, support people to uh, freely access those kind of resources, even though there is a uh, access uh, 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 access uh, rights in the Azure portal, it doesn't go very granular. So we wanted to give like a much more granular uh, level of uh, access rights. And also auditing is uh, something very important. Like if somebody changes the properties of a queue on a production system, it's important you audit it rather than you know like uh, uh, not having any government at all. And uh, we also introduced uh, extra, external notification channels like Slack, Page Duty, and Microsoft Teams is coming in a week's time. So there are a lot of uh, developments uh, going on on the on the monitoring and notification side. So I just want to give a quick uh, overview of the visit with the slides, and we really wanted to show the product. So let's switch over to the, the demo, and Arun will take over from here, uh, showing the product capability. Thank you very much. So as uh, Sarana mentioned, we position Service Bus 360 as a one platform where you can manage, monitor, and analyze your uh, Azure Service Bus uh, uh, namespaces. Getting started with uh, Service Bus 360 is very easy. You just need to associate your Azure Service Bus namespaces with the connection strings so that you can uh, Get, uh, get your namespaces being managed through Service Bus 360. We have introduced uh, um, a field called uh, friendly name, which uh, you can use to provide a friendly name so that you can easily identify your namespaces. Quite often, uh, the enterprises have got a notion of having a very long name uh, to represent all their uh, artifacts. So for this demo, I will be uh, adding a few namespaces um, under each category and uh, we will get started with that. So I will, 
add couple of namespaces from messaging and one from uh, relay as well as uh, even hub if you can clearly uh, if you can closely watch uh, we have we, we recommend the users to create a shared access policy with a shared access key name called service bus 360 so that you can identify that this connection string is being used for uh, uh, service bus 360 uh, management and if at all uh, you want to restrict service bus 360 from uh, uh, connecting to your namespaces you can just remove these uh, uh, shared access policies or uh, connection string from your azure portal so it is very easy to uh, provide and uh, revoke the access to service bus 360 connectivity So I would like to add a couple, two namespaces in messaging so that uh, I can uh, showcase a few interesting uh, capabilities with Service Bus 360, uh, like uh, how you can uh, connect multiple namespaces across Azure service, uh, Azure uh, subscriptions. With Azure portal, you will be able to access resources or namespaces only within that particular subscription. But uh, with Service Bus 360, you can provide connection strings uh, of your Service Bus namespaces across uh, multiple uh, subscriptions so that it is very easy for you to manage uh, multiple, uh, multiple namespaces from different subscriptions from single place. So in service bus, while building service bus 360, we have been uh, uh, using uh, Azure resource management uh, APIs extensively so that uh, we try to uh, bring about as much capabilities as possible to manage your service bus namespaces efficiently. Okay, now that I have uh, added the connection string, Service Bus 360 is ready to start. Uh, uh, you are ready to manage your uh, Service Bus namespaces to Service Bus 360. It's not that you can associate namespaces only uh, by providing the connection strings by filling up these forms, but you can also import namespaces by uh, uh, importing any uh, uh, importing your Service Bus Explorer configuration file where you store all your connection strings when you use Service Bus Explorer. It's very quite uh, uh, intuitive to connect all your uh, to import all your uh, um, Service Bus uh, uh, connection strings that you use with your Service Bus Explorer file. So you just need to select a couple of namespaces and uh, you need to select the type of that particular namespace for which it belongs to so that you can identify your namespace appropriately. Recently, Microsoft announced a namespace split so that uh, some, of, some of the old namespaces which supported all types of entities should be converted to uh, the new namespace uh, split convention so that uh, the info, we, can, we can maximize the utilization of the Azure service, Azure service bus infrastructure. So now that I have manually uh, 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 associated these namespaces, it, so it shows a warning that these namespaces were already uh, associated. But uh, if you have uh, too many namespaces within the configuration file, you can simply uh, select those uh, namespaces and uh, identify their types, and you can just uh, get started uh, with Service Bus 360 within a couple of minutes. So before moving to uh, the home section, I would like to give a brief introduction about uh, the options that you have, have here. Uh, settings dashboard provides you a snapshot of all the settings that you have uh, done on service bus 360 like how many namespaces you have connected how many uh, users you have uh, associated with service bus 360 to manage your namespaces and uh, how many notification channels you have configured let me connect a couple of uh, notification channels so that you can make use of them while you create some norms to monitor your uh, namespace entities so right now we have integrated uh, the notification to three different channels. One is 
uh, email the second is slack and uh, the third is uh, pager duty and we do have uh, plans to integrate uh, microsoft teams and uh, other uh, uh, integration channel other notification channels so that you can receive alarms uh, within uh, uh, alarm uh, you can uh, receive alerts to your uh, notification channel that your uh, team uses day in and day out so creating a channel uh, takes a few seconds we have uh, we have we, we have a work item in progress which will improvise uh, um, the creation of these channels and uh, uh, you can uh, create channels within a few seconds So to connect with your external notification channels, you just need to provide the integration keys. Let me add one more uh, external notification channel, Slack, so that uh, we, we have a variety of choices when you configure your alarms. Actually, uh, creating notification channels, you can also do it at the later point of time, but uh, in the best interest of uh, this demo, I just wanted to finish the setting section first and we can uh, go back to the operation side of Service Bus 360. So it is enough uh, if you just to provide the connection strings for your namespaces to get started with Service Bus 360. Okay, now that I have a couple of notification channels, uh, pager duty and uh, one in pager duty and another in Slack, and uh, Service Bus 360 by default provides you a email uh, notification channel. But if you want to add your own uh, uh, SMTP server configuration, you, you can also do so. So with this configuration, we can just uh, go uh, move to the operation section of the application. So as soon as you configure, uh, as soon as you associate some of your namespace connection strings uh, on the operation side, you see a quick snapshot of uh, uh, all your namespaces that you associated recently. And this gives you uh, quick overview of uh, the status of each and every namespace, like how many entities are available, have you configured any alarms, if at all an alarm is configured, uh, what is the status of an alarm, and uh, are there any uh, errors and warnings and all those things. So it is very intuitive to identify if something is, if a namespace is doing good or if something is wrong within the namespace. So for this demo, we will get started with managing, uh, messaging namespace that I have identified as uh, 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 dev, and switching between the namespaces that you have associated is very easy. You just need to uh, switch between uh, the namespace items in this uh, dropdown, and uh, you can uh, um, you can uh, go to that. Uh, actually, within Service Bus 360, uh, the top level is namespace. Like it's kind of a container within which the entire application loads. So you can switch between the namespaces here, so that the context of your application changes to that particular uh, namespace. So I already have a few queues in this particular uh, um, namespace. For this demo, let me just quickly add or uh, uh, create one or two queues, and you can see the capability of the product. So as you create the queues, you can uh, enable all these uh, uh, properties. It's very intuitive. And you can also define your uh, uh, default message time to live, log duration, and uh, all those cap all those uh, properties at the time of uh, um, at the time of uh, creating the queue. You can also provide the comments. comments within Service Bus 360 so that all these activities are audited for, uh, all these uh, uh, activities are tracked for future audition and you can see who has created this queue, who has updated this queue and what, for what reason they have updated or modified these queues.
so this provides you a greater control of uh, uh, the application or uh, the activities that are performed within your performed by your team members so now that you have created a queue it is very easy for you to enable or disable a queue copy a queue url copy dead letter queue url of this particular queue you can uh, take a look at the properties of your queue you can access your shared access policies and you can even uh, delete uh, one of your queues from here we are uh, constantly adding the features and expanding the existing features to provide more uh, uh, management capabilities within service bus 360 for now you will be able to access the shared access policy but in future we will be working on uh, uh, the ca capabilities to create and uh, uh, delete uh, the shared access policies so uh, you will be it's very easy to access the properties of a queue and uh, you can also edit uh, the property of a queue very easily okay now that you are uh, now that you have uh, seen uh, how you can uh, edit the properties of uh, your particular queue uh, you can also see how you can uh, enable a, uh, enable or disable a queue within just a few clicks and you can also uh, track the activity by uh, asking the user uh, to uh, provide the reason why you have uh, changed the status of the queue so that the activity tracking becomes very easy and uh, you can audit uh, your activities and for, for your future purposes so uh, these are the general uh, management capabilities what you have on the queue the next thing i would like to showcase here is how you can send messages to you, to your queue so we have an extensive uh, capability to send messages to your queues like uh, you will be able to send messages to your queue instantly that is one time and you can schedule an activity that will run at a particular point of time and you can also configure that particular activity to run uh, on a recurring basis so let me uh, create an activity and name it 1000 i would be interested to send some 1000 messages um this is a demo uh, this is a demo message i have you can also update or uh, you can also provide custom properties we are also working on uh, overriding the system properties as you send the messages those capabilities will be available in future you can uh, select the destination queue to which you want to send the messages to you can uh, select how you want to send the messages so for this demo i will just uh, uh, send the messages using the think time and uh, have based on the name i have provided for this activity let me just increase the message count and i want to initiate this activity as soon as i create it you can also enable scheduling for example if you want to receive if you want to send messages only by tomorrow or uh, uh, you want to schedule uh, schedule this activity to run at a different point of time in future or if you want to run this activity on a daily basis like say uh, at 10 o'clock uh, 10 o'clock uh, every day i want 1000 messages to be pumped into my queue so that i want to test whether my queue infrastructure is working absolutely fine and you can uh, define uh, the number of occurrences and you can also define the termination date of those uh, recur recurring activity so now that i have created an activity i also have selected uh, uh, to start this activity as soon as i configure it you can just switch to this particular tab and see uh, that particular activity would have started so it has already started sending some uh, eight messages to my queue so sending messages is uh, as simple as that like uh, uh, you have a better uh, user experience in configuring uh, an activity and you can reuse the activity as well so this configuration will be saved within service bus 360 and you can make use of it at any point of time 
so now the messages are being pushed to the cube let us just quickly see uh, how that particular uh, uh, cube behaves so if you take a look at this grid you can see there are 40 messages in this uh, uh, active queue and uh, there are uh, some messages that have already dead lettered let us just quickly take a look at how we can access the messages and what operations we can perform on them so uh, i can just pick the messages uh, from uh, uh, the main queue i can pro i can provide a message count and a sequence number combination so that i will be able to retrieve messages from any position of the queue so as you retrieve the messages through this particular tab it just only picks the message so that it doesn't lock it and uh, any any of your consumers are uh, uh, capable to re read these messages so now that if you can see the combination of message count and the sequence number it uh, service bus 360 retrieves the messages from uh, that particular position of the queue and this capability is not uh, available in any of the product that are available in the market and at the same time if you don't provide the sequence number it retrieves n number of uh, messages from the uh, delivery point of the queue you will be able to access the property of the messages take a quick look at uh, the message property or the metadata and then you can also take a quick look at the message details like this like uh, what are the custom properties of the message and what are the message uh, 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 what, what is the content of the message and in future releases we are also planning to uh, work on uh, providing edit capabilities to the message so that you can edit and resubmit it to the queue so now that there are few dead letters on this message uh, on this particular queue we can see how we can uh, uh, pick the messages from in the dead letter i uh, take a look at uh, what are the messages that are available uh, in the dead letter queue and what activities we can perform on them so we provide an intuitive uh, p clock uh, option so that you don't uh, uh, receive the messages from the dead letter queue but just pick the messages and take a look at the details of the messages uh, the message count and sequence number combination works as similar to the uh, one which we saw in the messages tab and you can uh, quickly go through the properties and details of the message apart from that you can also take a look at the reason why it has been dead lettered so now you can see uh, uh, this particular message has been dead lettered due to ttl expired exception and it will also display the other types of exception based on which the message has been moved to dead letter if you also uh, mention any uh, custom uh, uh, exception details that will also be displayed here so once you have retrieved the once you have retrieved the uh, messages uh, from the dead letter queue using p clock if you want to filter the retrieved messages based on the existing exceptions that is also possible so that you can uh, uh, if you retrieve like hundreds of messages and if you want to uh, specifically take a look at some set of messages you can filter through the, uh, um, the exception the exceptions here the next interesting concept what we would like to uh, demonstrate here is the message resubmission capability from the dead letter so there are two options how you can retrieve messages from a dead letter one is the p clock and the other is the receive and delete uh, uh, option but the risk with receive and uh, the, the, those two options comes with a uh, challenge for resubmission if you do a p clock uh, there is a chance that your message can get logged and if you receive a, if you retrieve a message through uh receive and delete the messages will be off the queue if you want to take a look at the queue uh, look at the message and if you want to defer the message or if you want to if you don't want to take any action on the message and still if you you want that message to reside in uh, uh, your dead letter that's not possible because you have already received them deleted it will be taken out of the queue infrastructure and the message is no more available within the service bus namespace so this challenge may happen in uh, uh, may occur due to various reasons like network disconnectivity your application uh, hangs uh, you you are not managing your uh, message retrieval uh, properly so there are n number of challenges that uh, most of the service bus customers uh, face day in and day out in uh, retrieving the messages from dead letters so we we went through all these challenges we discussed with a few customers understood their challenges and we want to give a very uh, uh, robust uh, solution so that you don't lose your message at any point of time so we introduced the mode called deferred mode 
whatever messages you retrieve from your dead letter we will receive and delete and defer the message within the uh, uh, queue so now all these messages will move to a secondary dead letter which is a uh, uh, which is a defer queue from which none of uh, any of your uh, other uh, consumer applications can retrieve the messages you can retrieve the messages from the deferred queue only using the sequence number so it is very difficult for any external application to access these messages once you have uh, deferred the message to service bus 360 we advise you to use service bus 360 to resubmit all your uh, uh, retrieve and resubmit all your messages that you have moved to deferred state so once you have uh, retrieved the messages in the deferred mode you can very easily resubmit a message to the queue you can resubmit to a same queue or a different queue or even to a different topic it asks for a quick confirmation and once you have done that uh it resubmit uh, it re it submits your uh, message to a destination you can also do a bulk resubmit i'm just going to show some of the capabilities of service bus 360 i'm trying to resubmit a message from uh, uh one queue to the another here and the next time you retrieve the messages from the deferred mode it will retrieve the next set of active messages within the dead letter and it will defer but you will lose those messages in this particular grid you will not retrieve those messages uh, which you have deferred already so we have uh, another tab to retrieve the deferred messages uh, to retrieve the messages that you have deferred already and you can uh, take action on those uh, on those messages as you require so you can uh, also resubmit the messages and also you can delete the messages from your dead letter so in this demonstration we have showcased how efficiently you can uh, resubmit and delete your messages without losing your messages within uh, from your infrastructure now that these functionalities are available only for manual uh, uh, in the manual mode we are uh, uh, we are working on a particular act, uh, work item where we will bring this as an uh, uh, bring this as an activity which you can schedule or uh, run it in the background for a very long time for example if you want to perform resubmission using service bus explorer since it's a desktop application you need to keep that application live till the entire uh, operation is complete but uh, uh, and at the same time you need to make sure the application doesn't hang or uh, you need to keep the application active but with service bus 360 you can just initiate an activity and you can just log off and uh, you may receive a notification once the activity is complete so we are working on that particular capability so now that i have uh, demonstrated the most of the operational capabilities i would like to quickly showcase uh, the monitoring capabilities of the queue so to start monitoring any of your entities you just need to create a alarm uh, uh, alarm which is a logic container this this concept is much similar to uh, bistock 360 monitoring what we have built uh, to monitor bistock artifacts uh, alarm is a logical uh, container through which we monitor the entities you can provide some summary here we have two types of uh, alerts that can be sent uh, when uh, uh, something is not right with your system one is a threshold violation you can configure uh, your uh, entities or you can monitor your entities for certain uh, configuration and if you can uh, uh, if if your entity is not behaving in a right way like for example if you want to monitor your queue for uh, active message count you can set some warning and the error uh, threshold values like uh, you can set a warning value of 50 and the error value of uh, 100 and if your active message count breaches any of these uh, values you need to receive alerts at any particular point of time uh, within uh, uh, you, you may configure uh, receiving alerts during the business hours or over the weekends depending upon your uh, team's availability 
so that you receive the alerts only during that point of time the next uh, type of alerts what you can receive is the health monitoring the previous type is the threshold uh, alert which will which will send alerts when something uh, when your entity state has breached the configuration what you have uh, specified but health monitoring irrespective of any configuration you do it gives you a snapshot of your particular uh, entity um, at any point of day based on your requirement like uh, if you feel like uh, receiving a snapshot of all your entities at 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, 4 pm in the evening you can configure uh, alarm to receive health monitoring so now that uh, i have configured my alarm to uh, alert to send alerts both on threshold as well as uh, uh, periodic uh, health report i want to define through which channel i want to receive these alerts for this demo purpose i will use the standard uh, uh, out of the box uh, email channel and the two notification channels that we have configured just uh, 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 in the beginning like as we uh, we configured these two notification channels right after we configured our namespaces okay now the alarm is ready we can just quickly go to any of our uh, um entities and uh, start monitoring them okay so this is the queue which we have been uh, pushing the messages to so let me click uh, navigate to the monitoring screen and uh, select some of the uh, properties which I, i i am interested in okay let me change this value to 50 and error threshold is 100 and the uh, message count i will uh, yeah so message count i will change it as um uh, 70 and 150 and I, i will also turn on the deleted messages so as soon as you configure your uh, uh properties configure threshold uh, uh, values for your properties you can see service bus 360 starts representing the state of your property and the entity so what you see here is based on the configuration it looks like this property is uh, in the error state and this property is in the warning state and this property is in the healthy state so it's an instant representation of uh, uh, your uh, entity based on the configuration which you have made you can uh, define Uh, you can configure you can monitor your entities based on uh, any uh, you you can monitor your entities by uh, attaching it to any number of alarms based on your business requirement you can do a positive monitoring as well as negative monitoring for example if you want to uh, check uh, if you want to monitor the status of uh, status of your queue and if you want to make sure your queue should st uh, stay in uh, disabled state for uh, for a purpose like you are uh, let us say you are doing some maintenance on your queue and you want your queue to be disabled but uh, you need to be alerted when it goes to uh, active state for some reason probably uh, external application may turn your uh, uh, queue to uh, active state or someone should, could have uh, change it in the state so as soon as if you uh, if the if the status of the queue changes you may need to receive the alert that is also possible we term it as a negative monitoring so as soon as you configure uh, any of your queue you can see um, the summary of uh, the issues in a uh, monitoring dashboard which is very intuitive it provides you some list of errors and warnings that has uh, occurred uh, on this particular queue so with this i would like to move to topics uh, uh, topic section all the capabilities of uh, creating uh, creating or uh, accessing the topics updating and deleting uh, the topics are uh, similar to queues you can also create subscriptions within the topics and you can also edit uh, the properties of the subscriptions you can enable or disable a, a topic or a subscription that's also possible you can read messages from the subscription and dead letter of your uh, uh, topic so most of the functionalities what we have in queues we have them on uh, topics as well but uh, one interesting uh, um capability what we would like to showcase here is apart from monitoring your topic based on your standard 
topic properties you can also monitor the properties of your subscriptions within the topic which is not possible in any of the two any of the tools that are available in the market now so let me select a few properties of uh, two subscriptions that are available in my topic and uh, let me uh, configure them so for some violations and i save it so service bus 360 provides monitoring capabilities to the level of subscriptions uh, in in the topics and uh, uh, partitions within the event hub so this dashboard provides a very clean summary of uh, all the entities associated with this alarm and uh, it also provides a summary of any issues that have uh, uh, occurred within uh, um, uh, within this particular uh, logic container configuration so uh, now that we have uh, configured an alarm and uh, configured some of uh, um, the queues to be monitored through this alarm we have started receiving the notifications through your email channel so this provides a very uh, user friendly um, display representation of all the errors and uh, warnings or uh, the state of your entity uh, pertaining to that particular uh, logic container and you also start receiving uh, uh, the incidents on your page of duty and the slacks and the and the slack channel which we have uh, uh, enabled to receive alerts to uh, alerts so that the alerts are being uh, transmitted to the external notification channel we have started receiving this and uh, one uh, 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 the other capability in the page duty is as soon as the uh, as soon as the incident is reported here all your team members will be receiving this uh, um, receiving this uh, incident report and service bus 360 it when if if at all your service bus namespace entity heals itself if the issue gets resolved itself it will automatically resolve the incident on page duty as well so that is also possible in future in the next release we will bring uh, the the notification channel integration to microsoft teams and other uh, notification channel so this is all we have on uh, the messaging side uh, in next so uh, 5 to 10 minutes i will uh, i will present the capabilities to manage your relays and even the through service bus 360 so let me quickly go back to the home and see uh, how the dashboard is representing our uh, namespaces based on the changes we have done here so now we have been managing our uh, uh, mess- uh, uh, one of our uh, messaging namespaces and you can see i have got six queues and uh, two topics here and uh, i have created uh, an alarm and which represents one particular entity is in critical state and this gives you a snapshot so for the demo purpose i have already created a uat na- namespace uh, within the messaging category and you can see there are no uh, queues and topics here but an interesting thing uh, uh, what we do on a day to day basis is we have multiple namespaces for various purposes like you will have a development namespace where your developers will be configuring all your queues and you will if you want to uh, recreate those uh, entities in your uat namespace so that you want to test the end to end capabilities of your uh, configurations while you want to do that you will do it manually and uh, there is the uh, manual uh, uh, that activity is actually error prone whatever configuration you have done in uh, development may not reflect uh, exactly on the uat because it being done manually and uh, once uh, once you rectify the mistakes uh, within the uat you have t- done uh, entire uh, uh, end to end testing once again if you want to do the same configuration in the production environment it is again the same manual activity that has to takes place and again uh, it is error prone so not all the ca- configurations that you have made on the dev and tested well on the uat may be replicated on the production when you uh, do it manually so within service bus 360 we have provided the capability to do that in a couple of clicks you can import the cap import the configurations uh, that you have exported from service bus uh, explorer service bus explorer provides a capability of uh, exporting the configuration of any entity that you have done through service bus explorer 
as an xml file you can import that xml file and import your uh, uh, create your uh, entities within the new namespace or you can import the namespace that you have just uh, uh, import the entities from the namespace uh, within service bus 360 where you have just created your queues so you can just select how many number of queues you want and uh, you can uh, you can select the source uh, um name space and uh, the destination name space is from where you are trying to initiate this activity and within the couple of clicks all these uh, entities get recreated in your messaging name space in the new name space so bingo you go there so all the six uh, queues that we have created on uh, service on the messaging namespace have been recreated with the same uh, with the exact configurations what we have done there so within uh, 30 seconds we were able to recreate all these uh, entities here so let us move on to the uh, to the management capabilities for relays there are only 5 minutes okay okay with the relays uh, i would like to quickly showcase uh, a capability of relay endpoint monitoring the other other capabilities are uh, similar like you can create a relay you can delete a relay from uh, within service bus 360 and that holds good for uh, event hubs as well so with event with, within event hub namespace you can just you can create uh, the event hubs you can manage your partitions you can create or delete your consumer groups you can monitor your uh, event hubs based on uh, uh, based on uh, Uh, the general properties as well as the properties uh, of your partitions and you can uh, similar to the activities what we had in uh, uh, the messaging namespace like uh, sending the messages to your uh, messaging entities you can also uh, send events to your event hub to test your uh, event hub infrastructure you can send event hub uh, you can send event events to one of your event hub uh, for once or you can schedule it or you can uh, even uh, uh, set it as a recurring so that on a daily basis you say you pump in like thousands of messages to your event hub to check your infrastructure is working fine so um, with the relays we are uh, we have a capability to create and delete the relays and uh, monitor your uh, listener count on the relays i'm just uh, um, starting i'm just hosting an endpoint now which we can monitor so that with that i i can conclude my uh, demonstration of uh, service bus 360 capability okay let me select a particular uh, relay so as of now within service bus 360 you will be able to monitor your uh, um uh, monitor listener count for your uh, relays and you can monitor web endpoints for your uh, web http uh, relays i can provide uh, if uh, based on the uh, based on the api or endpoint that i am monitoring i can configure uh, the authorization credentials or payload uh, to monitor my endpoints so in the best interest of time i'm just going to monitor a very simple endpoint uh, which is a get method and uh, i will be monitoring for few keywords like uh, name and uh, i just want to monitor my um, endpoint for a successful status you can also monitor your endpoint for any of your response times now that i have an endpoint uh, that is hosted you can see there is a listener count one i have an endpoint that is 
uh, hosted on the uh, exposed on this particular relay and this particular endpoint is being reported as healthy based on the configuration what i have let me uh, stop that uh, endpoint or a listener and you can see there are no listeners for your uh, relay and uh, the status has changed based on your uh, configuration and it gives you a quick summary of why this particular uh, endpoint uh, uh, is unhealthy so this will also be reported to your uh, uh, email or any other notification channel if you have configured them or you uh, uh, configured them on your uh, alarms so these are the major capabilities of ma managing and monitoring your uh, uh, service bus entity and uh, as the last part i will just quickly show what has happened in the governance and auditing section so right from the beginning uh, all the activities i have performed during this demo has been uh, tracked and it is available for future uh, uh, auditing purposes so it says i have tried to create an activity and it has i have tried to uh, create a topic and i have even tried to edit some of the queues so you can quickly take a summary of how many properties have been edited what was the old value and what was the new value and who was uh, uh, who was the person who did this particular activity so on and so forth you can also take a look at an alert history like what alerts have been sent from service bus 360 to various channels and you can quickly take a snapshot of uh, uh, the alert that has been uh, sent to you through various notification channels and you can also take a look at the activity history we created an activity to, to send some thousand messages to a particular queue and uh, you can see how quickly it has uh, pushed all these messages to your uh, uh, service bus namespace queue so these are the general capabilities that are available with service bus 360 and we are also working on uh, bringing more capabilities to uh, uh, capabilities to uh, help your team uh, to manage service bus entities we can we are uh, working on providing user access policies so that you can restrict some of your team members not to access certain namespaces for example you want only few of your team members to access the production namespace and uh, you want uh, you don't want your developers to access the production namespace but with uh, service bus uh, with azure portal you have to if you provide access to the subscription it it it, it, it is like you are providing uh, you are exposing all your uh, our team members to plethora of options that are available in portal so service bus 360 uh, with service bus 360 you get more control to manage your uh, service bus uh, namespaces efficiently and uh, we just want to quickly represent these are the functionalities we are uh, building uh, um, we are build, we are building right now and uh, since it is a software as a service all these functionalities will be uh, uh, introduced within the application like in two to three weeks uh, release cycle so we would like to be in connection with uh, um, with all of you uh, in promoting service bus 360 and we will try to reach uh, reach out to you in future to provide more information about the latest features that we release with the product thank you Great. Okay, thanks. Thank you thanks. very much, Arun Kumar. Saravana, thank you so much. That is one slick uh, UX. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Um, I don't know if anyone still would like to ask any questions. Um, we can give it a few more minutes here before we end this webinar.